Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, my name is Mihir Karkari. I'm an executive vice president at Miram India. And uh, I'm going to talk about today uh, some of the insights that uh, we've learned about uh, as part of the Miram India MarTech Report 2023. So, this is a report that we've been doing for a few years now. This is the third edition. And we ended up getting such great insights over the last couple of editions. We've made it into an annual property. So this is the latest edition. It's available for download now. You can download it uh, at that link. There's also a QR code right outside. Uh, so uh, So with that, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'll head into the meat of my presentation. The way we've, uh, you know, come up with this report is actually we did a, uh, we, we, we did a survey with 200 plus marketing decision makers. Uh, we got a lot of insights from some of the marketing leaders uh, in the country. And this was spread across multiple different industries. So respondents pretty much spanned every single industry that you can think of. And what we did here was we tried to understand what is it that these marketing decision makers think about the state of MarTech in our country today, right? What I'll try to do over the next few minutes is I'll try to take you through some key insights uh, that we've learned about. So the first insight I want to talk about is that um, the, the, the percentage of spends that marketers do on MarTech globally is 25.4%, over 25%. So over a quarter of their spends on marketing actually go on MarTech. Whereas in India, two thirds of respondents actually say that they're only spending less than 15% on MarTech. Right? So there's a huge, a significant headroom for growth. So while there has been a lot of buzz around MarTech in the last few years, what we're actually seeing is there's a significant headroom for growth uh, in spends on MarTech. Now this fact is also borne out by another insight we get, which is that 88% of respondents are saying that they're gonna increase their spends on MarTech in the years to come, right? So what we tried to do was we wanted to understand a little bit more about how this increase is gonna happen. So we uh, came up with something called the Miram MarTech Quadrant. So you can see the quadrant on the slide. The way we did it is, we plotted on the y-axis uh, how much people were using MarTech currently. So that went from rarely or never used MarTech to extensively use MarTech. And on the, on the x-axis, we plotted how were their MarTech spends going to change over the next three years. And that also went from maybe they're going to decrease all the way to going to substantially increase. And what we ended up seeing was that there were two cohorts which emerged which were very interesting. We saw a cohort called the MarTech explorers. These are people or these are respondents or organizations who are moderately using, uh, 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 you know, spending on MarTech today, but they're going to increase their spends in the years to come. And then there are MarTech heroes. These are the folks who are already extensively using MarTech, but they're also going to increase their spends in the years to come. So between these two cohorts, you have like 88% of respondents. And what we see is that it's almost as if a haves and have nots kind of situation is emerging, right? You are either going to increase your spend on MarTech or you're going to end up in a quadrant which is a stagnant or a Lagarde's quadrant, somewhere you don't want to be. We also asked, uh, you know, what are the key objectives that you want to get out of your MarTech investments? Now, what we found was most heartening here was that, uh, you know, the the respondents were not uh, looking at vanity metrics. They were actually looking at hardcore business results to the extent that the top, out of the top four, two of the top objectives were driving leads and driving sales. So this is something which was very encouraging. People are actually looking at hardcore value coming out of their market spends. At the same time, we also try to understand what are some of the hindrances that come about when it comes to adopting new MarTech tools, right? We, we looked at what are the objectives that are the key drivers, and then we also want to see what are the hindrances that come about. And that's where, uh, you know, you can look at this graph. So this is where uh, people are articulating, respondents are articulating the top hindrances. 
Now the biggest hindrance, and this is something which connects back to the previous slide, the biggest hindrance is if they are not sure about the ROI that they're gonna get out of the platform, then they are not gonna invest in the platform, right? So very, very driven by ROI. And the other two, uh, the, the second and the third ones are something which all of us in the industry need to kind of think about. Uh, they, 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 are, uh, they give us reason to ponder. So the second one was that they feel that the implementation of these MarTech tools, even if they do invest, the implementation of these MarTech tools are very, very complex. And the third one is, is, is even more thought provoking. They say that the, simple, the, the process of simply choosing the MarTech tool is very complex. So these are some of the hindrances uh, that uh, our respondents are facing when it comes to uh, you know, uh, investing in MarTech. The other way that we kind of uh, looked at the data was by slicing it on the basis of cohort of respondent and by looking at the designation of the respondent within their organization. So just to give you an example, we slice the data by, uh, Mar by MarTech heroes versus MarTech stagnants. And the question we asked them was, which tools, which MarTech tools are helping you achieve your MarTech objectives? So you have heroes on top and you have stagnants below. Now of course, when you guys do read the report, you'll be able to look at it in a lot more detail. But what's the trend that we see here? MarTech heroes say that a far wider range of products actually help them achieve their mar marketing goals. So they are actually you know, spending their time more broadly with MarTech platforms. Whereas if you see what MarTech stagnants are doing, you'll see a lot of tools or types of tools where there is nobody from the MarTech stagnant cohort saying these are driving marketing goals, right? So there's a very different behavior when it comes to a MarTech hero versus a MarTech stagnant. Perhaps that's why they are MarTech heroes uh, in the first place. So this is a split by, uh, you know, the type of cohort or type of organization. The other way that we do the split is, what is the designation that the respondent has in the organization, right? So where does uh, he or she lie within the hierarchy? So here's a look at uh, the CEO versus the CMO. Now what we see is CEOs, so now one of the sections in the report uh, is a section on how organizations uh, perceive and use data. So what we see here was CEOs are far more critical about their own organization's data maturity when it comes to CMOs. So we actually have a lot of CMOs, a lot of CEOs say that their own organizations are data unaware. A large number of CEOs say that their organizations are only data aware, everything when it comes to data is actually being done manually. Whereas CMOs, they, a lot more CMOs say that their organizations are data savvy, their organizations are data proficient and so on. So we see a difference where CEOs are very critical about their own organiza organization's data capabilities. And we believe this is gonna lead to a top-down push on adoption of technologies such as CDPs uh, in the months and years to come. This view that CEOs take where they, have, uh, you know, they have uh, very high expectations about their organizations actually also carries forward in, let's say, the skills that they want to see within their own teams, right? So we asked, what are the top skills you want to see within your marketing teams, right? And what, what CEOs answered was they wanted their marketing teams to be far more uh, broad-based in terms of skills. So the dark green line that you see is their responses to what skills do you want. So CEOs are, are you know, quite broad-based, whereas you see CMOs, their answers are more concentrated towards some skill set. So for example, CX as a skill set or analytics or use of uh, marketing automation platforms, right? So CEOs have a different way uh, of looking at, um, you know, what skills their marketing team should have. Perhaps, um, you know, this, this need for wide skills is also what leads to something we see in the next slide, which is the fact that a very large portion of organizations work with external organizations who are basically consultants or agencies or, or uh, you know, those kind of organizations in order to help them achieve their marketing and MarTech goals, right? So this is something, you know, you can't have all skills in-house and you do need a broad-based set of skills, which is what we saw in the previous slide. So that's where, um, you know, this particular insight kind of bears that out. Um, now, one is the CEO's view, but there's also 
the respondent's view on the new technologies that are emerging or the, or, or the changes that are rapidly happening in the ecosystem, right? So we asked two questions. One was about Web3, blockchain, crypto, and metaverse. So what is the preparedness of your organization for the advent of these technologies? And, uh, you know, the other question we asked about the fact that the cookie is, um, you know, about to end, or, or the death of the cookie is imminent, as they say. How well prepared is your organization for this, right? So these are two sets of questions we asked. Now, what we saw was when it came to the first of those questions, which is Web3 Metaverse, uh, blockchain and crypto, we saw that a vast majority of respondents say that either their organizations are completely unaware of the implications of these technologies, while another uh, large number of people say that while their organizations may be aware, this awareness is very sparsely spread um, and, and there's no uh, you know, very systemic way of uh, addressing these changes. Living in a cookie-less world, now this is, we've been uh, kind of approaching this very, very rapidly, and still we see a vast majority of people uh, or respondents say that either they are unaware, so there's still a lot of people who are unaware of this, or there's a significant portion that say that while they are aware, they haven't really prepared for how they are going to handle this change in the future. So these are some, um, you know, insights, uh, select insights that I wanted to kind of showcase uh, to the audience today. I uh, encourage everybody to download the report. It's available on this link already. We also have a QR code right outside which you can scan. There are copies available at the registration desk and me and my team are available to talk about it. So the report actually goes into a lot more depth about what is the state of MarTech in India today and I'm sure this is something that uh, pretty much every stakeholder in the ecosystem, whether it is uh, brands and organizations, agencies like us, or even technology providers are going to find immensely valuable. So I invite you to access the report. Uh, a little bit about us. We are Miram. We are a WPP agency. We are a growth partner to a lot of brands. As a full service digital and MarTech agency, we partner with a lot of brands to help them achieve their uh, digital and MarTech goals. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to conclude the session today. Thank you.